Hey everyone, I'm Ali Swolo. We're here in the Blackman Lab of Scripps Research. And today we're going to go over the use of the React IR as a tool for reaction monitoring. In particular, we're going to go over how it works, the setup, and also some practical considerations to think of when running a reaction. So whether you're new to this instrument or you just need a quick refresher, this video is for you. Let's get started. Let's start with a quick refresher on how the FDIR or the Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy works. FDIR works by passing infrared light through a sample, and it also measures how much of this light is absorbed by the sample. Different molecular bonds absorb specific wavelengths of this light, creating a unique spectrum for each molecule. Moreover, FDIR follows the Beer Lambert's law which means that the absorbance of the molecule is directly proportional to its concentration. Think of it this way. The infrared spectrum of your molecule is its unique chemical fingerprint. And what the React IR does is it collects the overall fingerprint set of your reaction. You should expect your reactant fingerprints to decrease over time, while your product fingerprints should become more prominent as time goes by. An example of in situ IR monitoring and literature is published by the Blackman Lab, wherein the consumption of the starting material 8 is monitored over time as the blue trace. This rapid analysis method enabled a simple experimental setup for carrying out same excess experiments, which are shown in entries 2 and 3. This tests for the presence of either catalyst deactivation or product inhibition. If you are interested in learning more about visual kinetic experiments, I encourage you to read the papers that are listed in the slides. So now let's go over the setup of the React IR. First is the probe. So this probe is designed to operate over a wide range of conditions, varying temperature, pressure, acidic or basic conditions, or oxidizing conditions, you name it. Just make sure to consult the manual. This probe is connected to a spectrometer that generates the infrared light that interacts with the sample through the probe. Lastly, we have the computer where you can easily visualize the data. It is connected to the spectrometer, which generates a real-time spectrum and shows your reaction progress over time. So why would you want to use the React IR in reaction monitoring? First, it is non-destructive. It doesn't alter the reaction while monitoring it. And being a rapid in situ method, you're also getting real-time data directly from the mixture. This can offer insights on some intermediates that you might otherwise not see through offline analysis. For instance, in this hydrogenation reaction, the author was able to identify intermediate 19 through react IR gas uptake and also reaction colorimetry. Intermediate 19 was observed to be oxidized easily during workup, so the use of in-situ tools bypass this difficult situation. And they were able to identify 19 as the tetrahydro intermediate. Overall, the use of in situ kinetic profiles combined with our chemical intuitions can aid in elucidating reaction mechanisms. And it can also help suggest further experiments to test our hypothesis. However, as with other analytical techniques, there are also limitations that you should keep in mind when considering the use of React IR. For one, overlapping peaks in the IR spectrum can make it challenging to distinguish compounds in complex mixtures. That being said, you also need identifiable functional groups in your molecule for this technique to work. Now let's do a demonstration to a simple amination reaction. First, go to the software ICIR and start a new experiment. We'll just make the duration of this one day since the reaction runs overnight and then we'll sample it every five minutes. So now we'll add a carboxylic acid into our reaction mixture. Then this will be followed by our base pyridine and also our coupling agent which is HATU or Hatsumi. Now that we added everything to our reaction bio, let's just wait for the React IR to sample every five minutes overnight, and then we'll get the reaction profile tomorrow.
Hey everyone, we're back here in the Black Moon Lab after letting the reaction run overnight. And you can see here that the reaction is now turned into a beautiful red color. And I already stopped it and also rinsed and cleaned the probe. And so now we can take a look at the results in our computer. So we can take a look at the results in here. And you can see that I chose here two IR peaks that I thought were good. Um, representative of what's being formed in the reaction and what's decreasing over time. But if you have trouble doing this, say you have a very complex spectrum, you can actually use the feature developed by Metler Toledo, this fine trans feature, wherein it will automatically do this for you. And so you can see here that some traces are grouped according to how much they have increased over time. And you can see here different peaks that correspond to this component of what the software thinks is the same molecule. And you can see here something that has decreased over time. And so this helps if you have a really complex spectrum. We'll try to export this and then after some data treatment, we'll look at how good a temporal profile we can get from this instrument. One thing to keep in mind is that it might be best to have any more results or even other in-situ monitoring results such as reaction colorimetry to see if your IR results are consistent across the board. But that is IR monitoring in a nutshell. It is this powerful tool for getting a reaction profile in real time. And so if you have any questions or want to learn more, feel free to leave a comment and check the references in the description and we'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.